Genesis 37, beginning at verse 1. Genesis 37, beginning at verse 1. Let me just read excerpts of this. Genesis 37. Beginning at verse 1, it reads, I'm reading from the King James Version. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob, Joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brothers. The lad was with the sons of Bilhi and with the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives. Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all the other brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Joseph dreamed a dream and told it to his brothers, and they hated him yet the more. Verse 18 says, And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, let us kill him, cast him into some pit. And we will say an evil beast had devoured him, and he, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into his pit, into this pit that is in the wilderness, lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. It came to pass when Joseph was come to his brothers, they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. They took him, cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. They sat down to eat bread. They lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery, balm, and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. Judah said to his brother, what profit is that if we slay our brother and conceal his, hide his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers were content. That's enough. If you're not too mean, just look at someone and tell them, I'm favored. Amen. I'm favored. I'm favored. Here's the thesis of this series of sermons. God takes us out of familiarity, puts us in unfamiliarity so we can see his power. That's what God does. God takes us out of familiarity, puts us in unfamiliarity so we can see his power. Genesis 37 starts off by showing us the picture of Jacob with a flash image of his son Joseph, one of the younger boys. Joseph is a son that basically reports to Jacob on a daily basis, so to speak. The Bible allows us to know that Joseph is 17 years old. As he's 17, he brings his father their report. And the report that he brings there is that my brothers, my older, bigger brothers, are not doing what they ought to be doing for God's kingdom. They are abusing and misusing the power that they have. They've been put in places to execute authority, but they're not doing what they should be doing. And I could stop right there and say a whole word about that. That there are many people that are placed and have prayed for God to put them in places. And once they get there, they never do what they ought to do for the building of God's kingdom. But Jacob realizes something with his son Joseph. He understands that Joseph is only able to succeed if he has his father's blessing. 
And let me just say a word about that because Jacob takes time out of his schedule to bless Joseph's life. There are some fathers that need to understand that you need to take time out of your busy schedule of doing whatever it is you're accustomed to doing and bless your children. The Bible says that Joseph and Jacob have a relationship. And the text says in verse 2 that Joseph brings his father an evil report. In other words, Joseph told the truth about what the brothers were doing by giving an evil report. Let me just say this. You need to not get mad when people tell the truth on you. The Bible allows us to know that the brothers have done evil in their doings. And Joseph brings up this report. And the report is not good. He brings his father an evil report. But verse 3 turns attentively to the fact that Israel loves Joseph more than all his children. And the term Israel, we know, is the name that the angel gives Jacob as he's wrestled all night. And the Bible says now in verse 3 that Israel loves Joseph more than all the boys. Understand that, that Jacob does not allow his decrepitude disengage his discernment. The older he gets, the wiser he gets. In other words, he understands that you don't have to be a fool and be old. You can just be old. Look at somebody, tell them, I know that's right. And notice what happens. Jacob, Israel, decides that, is, that, that Joseph is going to be the boy that he loves. And notice what happens because in verse 3 that Jacob gives Joseph the coat. Notice what happens. The Bible says he makes him a coat of many colors. And when his brothers saw in verse 4 that he loved them more, they hated Joseph even the more. Let me unpack that in verse 3. The Bible allows us to know that it, Joseph gets a coat of many colors. And this coat is a tunic, basically a coat in which it has sleeves in it. The brothers has a coat in which there are no sleeves. The difference is that one has to work in the field and one has to report and work in the house. Notice what happens. The brothers are out in the field while Joseph is in the house. And the Bible says that notice Jacob is the one that makes the decision and and notice what happened as a result. Verse 4 says, when his brothers saw their father loved him more, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Understand, people will hate you for what you have, but they don't realize that what you have is not much more than what they have. Let me see if I can stay right there for a minute. You've got to realize it's some people that don't like you based upon the fact of you having favor on your life. It's some people that don't like you based upon the fact that God has chosen to bless you in the way that he's blessed you. And here's what's crazy is they don't know how you got the blessing. They don't know what you're doing to keep the blessing, but they hate you because you're blessed. And every now and then you have to unapologetically say to them, I don't care what you feel or what you think because I'm not going to hide my blessing and neither am I going to try to give away my blessing. I'm going to enjoy the favor that's on my life. Is there anybody in here early in the morning that realizes I got to enjoy the favor that God has placed on my life? So understand, people will hate you for what you have, but they don't realize that what you have is not much more than what they have. Understand, the Bible says in verse 4, they hated him. What makes a person hate you? Let me tell you, the thing that makes a person hate you is them realizing that you have something that they don't have. And watch what happens. You got to realize it has nothing to do with you because it has everything to do with God. And the Bible says in verse 5 that Joseph went to bed. Let me tell you, when people hate you, 
You got to learn how to go to bed. Okay, y'all missed it. Look at verse 5. I'm in the text. The text says in verse 5, and Joseph dreamed a dream. Look at verse 4. Verse 4 said, and, and when his brothers saw their father loved him more, they hated him and could not speak peaceably. But verse 5 says, and Joseph dreamed a dream. The next time you realize somebody does not like you, the next time you realize somebody hates you, let, let me help you out. Go to sleep. Look at somebody. Tell them go to sleep. Uh, just lay down and go to sleep uh, because God has more for you uh, than just the coat. Uh, the coat was just the first process uh, of what God is getting ready to do. Uh, verse 5 says God allows him to go to sleep. Notice what happens. The text says in verse 5, and Joseph dreamed a dream and told this to his brothers, and they hated him yet the more. If you think you hate me because of one thing, you ain't seen nothing yet. Is there anybody in here that realizes that you can't get hung up on other folk hangups? You got to realize if they hate you for that, then they ain't seen nothing yet because God has more for you. Look at somebody tell them, God got more for you. Uh, God got more for you. Come on, look at them and tell them God got more for you. Uh, and the reason why I know God got more for you uh, is because watch what happens. Uh, the Bible says in verse 5 that Joseph dreams a dream. Uh, anytime you got dreams, uh, you have potential. Anytime you have potential, you know there's hope. Uh, and anytime you got hope, uh, you got something you're looking forward to. Uh, is there anybody in here that know I got something I'm looking forward to? Over to uh, God did not bring me this far to leave me. I got more that God has for me. So notice what happens. Notice they hate him, but Joseph goes to sleep. He has a dream, and as he's having the dream, the Bible says he dreams it, and then he wakes up and tells his brother. And notice when he tells them, they hated him ever the more. I need to allow somebody here to know that just because people hate you, it does not stop what God is doing for you in your life. That's a major word for somebody, because you are you are held up uh, on what other folk think of you. Uh, you are hang, hang, have hang-ups uh, based upon uh, them not liking you. Uh, you're sitting up decrepit and sad because they won't let you in their circle. You don't need to be in their circle. You don't need them to like you. Uh, you don't need them to approve of you. Uh, when you got God, that's all you need. Uh, is there anybody in here that know if I got God, that's all I need. Uh, and since I got God, that's all I need. Notice what happens. The Bible says, uh, when you look at it, he only has two things. He has a coat and he has a dream. Now, notice the dream is about, watch this, him being large and in charge over his brothers. And I need to tell somebody in here that when you have a dream, you got to hold on to the dream that God has given to you. Because you do understand that the dream that God has given to you is for a specific time and for a specific place. The Bible says he tells them the dream, but notice in verse 6, uh, people will hear you, uh, but often they misunderstand what you're saying. Notice what happens in verse 6. Uh, and he said unto them, hear, I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. He says, I need you to hear me, uh, but notice what happens. You have to know people will hear you, uh, but they will misunderstand what you're saying. Okay, you can tell them one thing, and they will misinterpret what you say uh, and say you say it something else. Uh, look, let me help you out. When the enemy casts negativity in a person's mind, it does not matter how much you try and interpret for them. They're going to interpret based upon uh, demonic influences. Uh, and that's why you can't tell everybody your dream uh, because everybody is not on your level. Okay, let me see if I can help some of y'all out. Uh, because a whole lot of us, uh, we told folks stuff uh, and we thought that they would celebrate with us. Uh, we thought that they would congratulate us. Uh, but in, in other words, uh, what they did was they didn't celebrate or congratulate. Uh, all they did 
was hate. What you've got to learn how to do is regardless of them liking you or not liking you, you've got to learn how in the midst of them hating you, you've got to learn how to celebrate on the inside. Look at somebody tell them you got to celebrate on the inside. you got to learn how to party even when they're being pitiful. Is there anybody in here that know I party all by myself because I know what God has promised me. So, so understand, people will hate you for what you have, not realizing that what you have is not much more than what they have. But understand, people may hear you, but often they will misunderstand what you are saying. The Bible allows us to know that in verse 11, and his brothers envied him, but his father observed the saying. Notice what happened after he tells the dream. The Bible says in verse 11, the brothers envied him. In other words, they wanted to be him, and yet they hated him the more. But notice what his daddy does. His daddy understands and perceives what's going on. Let me see if I can make this plain, because because it's a whole lot of us uh, that we are being misunderstood with what God is saying to us uh, through other people and watch what happens just because uh, they don't value and they devalue what God has value. It does not make the stock price go down. Uh, let me see if I can help about five of y'all in here. Uh, just because somebody does not appreciate who you are, you cannot deduce yourself down uh, to make yourself devalued uh, of who you are, every now and then you got to realize uh, that since God's hand is on you, uh, you got to allow yourself to operate uh, as though God's hand is on you. Okay, just because you ain't there yet don't mean that you ain't got to operate like you are there yet. Okay, let me see if I can make that plain. In other words, I'm not telling you to go to Nordstrom's. I'm not telling you to go to Neiman Marcus. What I'm telling you is to enjoy where you are, but operate like where you're going. Amen. In other words, you can't be disorganized on this level and think you're going to take disorganization and dysfunction to the next level. You got to get organized on this level because God has promised you another level. Okay, let me see if I can help you out. In other words, you cannot not pay your taxes on this level and then think you're going to go to the next level and not pay your taxes. You got to get your business together on this level and then on the next level, the order that you set on this level will follow you to the next level. Okay, I'm still not coming across clean. You cannot pay your bills on this level and think you're going to go to the next level and still not pay your bills. You got to pay your bills on this level and then on the next level the order will follow suit. Uh, okay y'all still ain't grabbing hold of me. Uh, you might not have nothing but one suit uh, but you got to keep the one suit together on this level until you get to the next level and then watch this. Uh, the order that you set on the last level will follow you to the next level. Okay I'm still ain't, I'm still not coming across. Uh, you might not have but one bedroom uh, but is there anybody in here that know uh, I'm going to organize this side of the bedroom uh, and on that side of the bedroom uh, I'm going to make sure everything is in order on that side. Uh, watch what happens uh, because I'm getting ready for God to give me three bedrooms on another level and when I go to that level I understand uh, that the order will follow me to that level. Is there anybody in here that knows uh, that I'm getting stuff ready on this level because God is taking me to a whole nother level. Look at somebody tell them you're getting ready to go to another level. Now hold on. Before you shout, you got to understand that everything may not be cool and copacetic. It's some stuff that will break out. But when it breaks out, I got a promise, I got a dream, and I got a coat. Is there anybody in here that knows I got a promise, I got a dream, and I got a coat. And since I'm holding on to all three, I understand I'm on my way to the next level. Look at somebody tell them I'm on my way to the next level. Okay, watch what happens. Watch what happens. See, you see, watch what happens. The Bible says in verse 23, and it came to pass when Joseph was come to his brothers <clears throat> that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. Let me see if I can make this plain. You see, you can take what's on the outside from me, but you can't take what's on the inside. 
Let me see if I can do that a little bit plainer. You see, many of us, we're so focused on what's on the outside that when you take the outside, many of us can't function on the inside. Okay, let me see if I can make that look cleaner. Because there are those of us that we are who we are based upon what we have. But you've got to be who you are based upon who you are on the inside, regardless of what you have on the outside. Look, I might not have it yet, but I do understand that the God that I serve has given me breath in my body. And as long as I got energy and breath in my body, I'm believing it's going to come to pass. Is there anybody in here that realizes uh, I got it on the inside. Uh, I might not have it on the outside yet, uh, but I got it on the inside. Uh, and as long as I keep on getting up uh, and rising and going to sleep, uh, is there anybody in here that knows uh, I know that there is potential? Okay, okay, watch, watch, watch. You see, you can't take what's on, you can take what's on the outside from me, but you can't take what's on the inside from me. And many of us need to know what's on the inside. When you know that the Spirit of God is what reigns on the inside, let me tell you, depression has to go. When you know what's on the inside, you cannot be sad and, and looking all depressed and everything because that's got to go. Uh, negativity has to go uh, because I know what's on the inside. And the problem with many of us is uh, we so concerned about what's on the outside. Okay, let me see what outside external foes we got. Many of us, if we don't, you can tell when many of us got a boo thing. Because when we got a boo thing, we act different. The moment you ain't got a boo thing, you sitting around, you sad, you just looking like you want to kick rocks. But to get a boo thing, you just walking around just snapping and twisting and twirling, playing in your hair. You ought to play in your hair whether you got a boo thing or not. Because it's your hair. Bought, grown, amen, whatever one it is, it's your hair. Look at somebody tell them, it's mine, it's mine. So, so you ought to have a joy on the inside. Watch this. Whether, whether you get paid this week or not, you ought to have joy on the inside. You can tell when many of us got money, you can tell when we ain't got a dime, amen. Because many of us, we don't wash our face when we ain't got no money. Amen. Look at somebody tell them, wash your face. Please brush your teeth. Goggle. Amen. Hit that. Hit that. Hit that. Amen. Because understand, you got to understand that joy is on the inside. I'm not concerned with the outside. And let me tell you, whether I got money in my pocket or not, you'll never know because I'm going to always look like, amen, I'm going to always look like I got some. Do I have a witness here? You got to understand that it's not about the outside. It's about what's on the inside. And Joseph realized what's on the inside. He understands. He has a dream on the inside. Okay, here's his next point. His brothers are supposed to cover him, but instead they're trying to kill him. The Bible says, notice what happens in verse 19. They say, here come this dreamer. And, and, and they come up with this plan that they're going to they're gonna kill him, throw him in a pit, and allow the dream to be destroyed. Let me see. What do you do when the very people that are supposed to cover and keep you are trying to kill you? I can say a word about that because you got to understand, uh, you have to know that when you have people that are supposed to cover and keep you trying to kill you, you got to first of all keep your composure. Look at somebody tell them, keep your composure, keep your composure. You got to keep your composure. In other words, you can't come apart at the seams. You, you cannot allow yourself to act out of character because someone is trying to kill you. You got to stay in check. Let me tell you, every time Saul would try to throw javelins at David, every time Saul would try to kill David and have David assassinated, David would always find a way of escape because God was providing and protecting him. And let me help you out. You don't have to try and get back at a person because they're trying to get at you. 
every now and then you have to realize uh, that God has so designed it to keep you uh, from allowing them to kill you. Uh, is there anybody in here that knows uh, that you've got to realize uh, that I got to keep my composure? Look at somebody, tell them, keep your composure. But then secondly, you got to keep your cool. Are you looking for extraordinary senior care assistance for your loved one? Here at Promise Cares, we are dedicated to ensuring our clients continue living independently and comfortably in their own home. Whether it's short or long term, our experienced caregivers are available. Contact us today to schedule an appointment with no obligation at 901-357-3337. Thank you. The Land Academy is cultivating first-class learning in a first-class facility for children six weeks to 12 years of age. Here we are curriculum-based and all staff is CPR First Aid certified. The Land Academy provides a safe and clean environment, hot cooked meals, transportation within a two-mile radius, before and after school care, qualified staff, and hands-on learning. For more information, please contact the Land Academy at 901-353-1277. Are you looking for extraordinary senior care assistance for your loved one? Here at Promise Cares, we are dedicated to ensuring our clients continue living independently and comfortably in their own home. Whether it's short or long term, our experienced caregivers are available. Contact us today to schedule an appointment with no obligation at 901-357-3337. Thank you. Cheese. 